Eight murders a day takes us to the streets tagged as the most dangerous in the world. Director Michael Mann says the cycle is easy to understand. The U.S. sends guns and money, and we get drugs in return. Breaking that cycle is vital to Mexico's future. Today, the grassroots effort to remove Pierce began over a month ago, but now organizers are hitting the pavement, going door to door. Meanwhile, Pierce supporters are also gearing up. And we certainly hope not. The burial plot is located at Green Acres Cemetery in Scottsdale. Now, this isn't the first time sellers have thrown in unusual extras to try to get someone to buy their house. In fact, one elderly man sold his house, but he came with it. He simply said he wanted a place to stay until he passed on. He was lonely and he could use the company. Even after Hank was stabilized and pulled from his SUV, the hard part wasn't over. Keep in mind, he was in critical condition and there was only one way to take him to the hospital. I know this late in the game, this is a lose-lose situation for both parties involved. When I reported this story on August 8th, I could not go inside that home today. I got the full tour. The smell inside was so bad, we had to go outside to do the interview. But keep an eye out for when you're at restaurants. Make sure you're ordering foods without egg as a raw ingredient. Ask for it to be cooked. The Cattlemen's Association feels securing the border with manpower and resources is the only way to curb the problem. Additionally, they do not want ranchers to take the responsibility of fighting these cartel members for obvious safety reasons. They want troops now. If doctors do not know if she will ever walk again. His daughter has at least one collapsed lung. There's breathing tubes to keep her going right now. Serious conditions, so they do think that they are going to make it, but they have a few leads police at this point. They still need the public's help, but a sad story, one that we're sure to probably hear a lot more about in the coming in the coming days. All right, Elias Johnson, thanks for that report. Now, police and also found a small amount of marijuana, most likely for personal use. He will be charged for that, though. McCurry faces four felony drug charges. The county attorney will likely have to go back in time to determine how to punish him, but police call this a huge bust and a big dent on the supply of mushrooms here in the Valley. Right. See? Reporter Elias Johnson joins us now with the story. Elias? Good evening, Peter. And those family members range in age from small children to grandparents and all five adults, four kids. It involves a charcoal grill. And in the past, we've seen people actually try to heat their home with charcoal. But in this case, investigators say they were indeed using it to eat. So is Terry Bowersock getting back into the consignment business using her partner's name to start the new company? We wanted to find out. But after the undocumented employees are handed over to ICE, most business owners find new workers and they go right back to work. Is it all worth it? You decide. And Min thinks the citizens of Mexico need to stand up to the government, like we're seeing in parts of the Middle East. Eight Murders a Day opens this Friday in Tempe at Harkins Theater off Mill and Fifth Avenue. Showtime should be posted soon. You can see the trailer or more about this film at 8. That's the number 8, MurdersAday.com. We've seen this before. Justin Crispin makes his living buying foreclosed homes. He fixes them up and he puts them back on the market. He did the same thing with this property behind me, only this time he didn't actually go inside and ever see it. Well, when he got the keys and did get a chance to take a look for himself, he realized he definitely bit off a lot more than he could stomach. This was foreclosure bought at the auction steps. The concept is simple. You can flip it or sell it. I mean, there's a lot of different end goals in mind. And this home along East Hale Street in Mesa is Justin Christman's next big investment. We saw the outside, never saw the inside. After his cash bid won, he got the keys. I came in expecting the worst. No carpet anywhere. The video speaks for itself. Look at all that. The previous owners moved in back in 1988, but you wouldn't need a property deed to prove it. 1988, mail, junk mail. Crews with Vacant Home Rescue have been collecting the rotting garbage for three days, filling four industrial-sized dumpsters. Smell is just the most rancid thing you can ever imagine. The interior decorator can vouch for that. It was so repulsive that I had to come back out and throw up. Has it ever happened before? Never. No. I've never... No. No, no, no. Speechless is the only adequate adjective I can use to describe it. Any regrets? Yeah. <laughs> this investment may not pay out like he'd hoped, but rolling the dice does come with peace of mind. In the end, this neighborhood just lost another distressed property. A lot of regret, a lot of optimism. It's a mixed bag. The only non-option is walking away. You finish it regardless. And the neighbors here are thankful for that, that it is going to be finished. Chris been paid $93,000 for this property. It is a great deal on paper when compared to other neighborhood prices here in this neighborhood. He finds out Wednesday on the official inspection exactly how much money he's going to have to shell out to fix this thing. But as I said, it's going to happen. And you guys have already been invited to the open house. Reporting live in Mesa, Elias Johnson, CBS 5 News, telling it like it is.
only on five tonight. The Hell's Angels let our cameras roll as they said goodbye to a longtime member. Elias Johnson was the only reporter invited to attend the service. He joins us now live with more on this story. Elias. Seen good evening. The Hell's Angels have been known in the past for drugs, murder, and violence. And now the Phoenix chapter president says it's time to change that image. They want to ditch the term biker gang and replace it with motorcycle club. The roar of thunder in the air is as unmistakable as the logo on their jackets. We've got uh, Hell's Angels from all over the world. And never before has an outsider been invited to get this close to such a sacred gathering. Because we've been in the press so much lately and, and it's all been pretty much negative, uh, we felt like uh, we invite you guys out here to see a different side. Lee Cole, who heads the Phoenix chapter of the Hells Angels, has given CBS 5 full access to the funeral of 70-year-old Raymond Baker, better known as Boomer, who died three weeks after a motorcycle accident. Boomer was an Oakland member for 30-some-odd uh, years before he transferred out to Phoenix. Within the parking lot of over 500 are angels from east to west and several more from around the world. But there are also dozens of rough riders, vultures, and hooligans. I don't have family in town. But I have a huge family with the uh, brothers. Across the street from the handshakes and hugs, federal agents watch, serving as a reminder into the troubled past of the Hells Angels. That power of that patch carries so much weight and so much fear and intimidation. Few people know the notorious history of the Hells Angels quite like Steve Trethaway, who headed the Department of Public Safety's Biker Outlaw Unit for 27 years. Most of them have jobs. Um, you know, personally talking to them one on one. It's fine. Even as a law enforcement officer talking to him a lot of times, it's, it's fine. But again, they live by a different set of rules. I don't think anybody could live under the kind of scrutiny we do by the police without having a few guys get in trouble. <laughs> Tears but no words are said as friends and family look over Baker's custom coffin. An hour later, it's loaded into a hearse bound for Tempe as riders prepare for a wet ride. We're going to give him the best send off we can and, and then all get together and uh, remember his life and have a good time. Twenty miles later, they arrive at the cemetery. We're going to keep this real short. Boomer didn't want no service or nothing like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and put him in the ground. Members take turns draping the red coffin with mementos. We were Boomer's family, and, and uh, uh, I think people need to see that side of us as well. Finally, the service is concluded with the time-honored tradition of each Hell's Angel burying their own. <laughs> Trying to undo their violent past may never happen, but the Hells Angels hope this rare glimpse will open eyes to a new side never before seen. We're not hurting anybody. We're just doing our own thing, you know. And another reason Lee tells me it's time to ditch that outlaw tags because that classification makes them targets for other up-and-coming motorcycle clubs who want to prove their toughness, and we've certainly seen that the past few months. Reporting live, Elias Johnson, CBS 5 News, telling it like it is. It has been three months since a homeless man found a bag with more than $3,000 cash inside. He gave it back, and people from all over the world paid it forward to him. Elias Johnson went to find out how he's doing. Every project starts with a dream. You are seeing um, the new Escalante Community Garden. When the Tempe Community Action Agency dreamed of a community garden project, they needed to find someone with experience. That's all I've done all my working life has been in those, in those fields. Dave Talley lived in one of the agency's homeless shelters three months ago. No home, no job, and no money. That is until the day he found a backpack someone had left behind. Inside was $3,300. But instead of keeping what he didn't have, he turned it in. He gave the money back, and uh, he has been rewarded tenfold because of that. Since that selfless act, Dave has gotten donations from around the world. And finally, his own apartment. My apartment is just absolutely cool. I found a nice little place, a nice little fourplex, so it's real nice and quiet, great part of Tempe. With so much to smile about, he decided it was time for a new set of teeth. What a life-changing experience to be able to smile. We can just want to walk around, you know, smile at somebody and they'll look at you and go, ooh. You know, so thank you, Dr. Harrison. With all his accomplishments, it was only natural for the agency to give Dave a shot. He is going to be our garden co coordinator. With my background, it was the dream position. For the first time in his life, He's got his own office. Right now I'm learning all about Microsoft Word, um, how to do basic formatting, um, how to do emails. I just sent my first email and working on typing skills. So it's, 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 I have a lot of work ahead of me. There's no doubt about that. After three months on fast forward, 
He's finally catching his breath. When you look at this dirt and these seedlings, what do you see? My future. From Tempe, Elias Johnson, CBS 5 News, telling it like it is.